Please welcome the lovely, talented, and absolutely incredible Crystal Gale. Crystal, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Delighted to have you here. Great to be with you. Clearly, you've got a lot of fans in this audience, and you've got a fan on the other side of this desk right here. Well, I'm a big fan of you. Thank you. Well, now that we've had our little confab <laughs> of, uh, well, truly, your music has just transcended uh, so many people and uh, Grammy-winning Grand Ole Opry, but you hadn't been in the studio for a while, so what brought you to say, putting a new album out? Well, you know, I, I've been in the studio doing different things, but I didn't realize it'd been as long as it's been since I had a, a, a new CD, CD out, but uh, I went in with my son, Chris. Yeah. He, he graduated from Belmont University and in engineering and uh, music business, and I definitely wanted the business part, so we can mm -hmm. fall back on that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we just had a great time in the studio, and, and we decided to, uh, we had to put it out. How cool was it to work with your own son putting this album together? Because that had to be, I mean, a great experience. Well, I wanted uh, Chris to see the type of music I grew up singing, mm -hmm. real country music. Yeah. And that's always been a part of my life. And, but, you know, a lot of people, they look at my songs and they think of M.O.R., which it was, Middle of the Road, and that was a conscious effort. Uh, you know, with my sister, she told me, uh, you know, quit singing her songs. <laughs> you know, so we have one Loretta Lynn, we don't need another. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but we right. also have a Crystal Gale and there's, there can't be another. <laughs> I mean, you had such a unique career that was completely separate from your sister Loretta Lynn, and you, you stood on your own feet with your own voice and your own uh, very clear mark in the music business. Well, I knew that uh, when I first started, it was Decca Records, it was my sister's label. Uh -huh. And I knew that I was really only there because of her and I could feel it. So I really needed to find someone who believed in me and United Artist Records, I mean, they were there. Uh, when my contract ended with uh, Decca, it was like, hey, come on over here. Do you get tired of singing the hits that you have had, I mean, you've sung them, I'm sure thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of times by now. Does it ever get to where you say, oh boy, here I go, I gotta do that one again? Well, there might be a few, but, <laughs> but I've always asked, I've been asked about Brown Eyes. And, yeah. and that song was so well written that I never get tired of singing it. In this new album, what are we gonna be able to look forward to? Because it is something completely unique and different and new. I'm excited about it. I want you to tell us well, what I, all you've got in it. I started out the album with a Ribbon of Darkness, mm -hmm. a Marty Robbins song, which I opened for Marty and very early on in my career. But also, it was the first song I sang on the Grand Ole Opry. And it was at the mm -hmm. Ryman, and I was probably about 17. Yeah, and 17. I, yeah, and the I, opera. I mean, those were the days, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you also worked with one of the people that I consider one of the greatest, not just artists, but greatest people, and that's Buck Owens. Oh, yeah, Buck what Owens. What a great human being. Buck was great, and you know, I would be able to go to um, Angola, Indiana, Buck Lake Ranch, mm -hmm. and he would perform there, and every now and then he'd let um, my sister and, and myself get up on stage and sing with his band. I loved it, <laughs> and he was so great, and actually, I was about 16, and he, he called mom, and wanted me to come out and be on his television show, but it didn't work out, you know, in the sense of I was pretty young and definitely she wouldn't let me up, go out there by myself. <laughs> well, good for her. I think if you're 16, <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. But, you know, the fact that you were already recognized as having this extraordinary talent as a young teenager, singing at the Opry at 17, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's pretty high cotton, as we'd say in South Arkansas. You know, it's... Music has been a part of my life, my, my whole family. In Kentucky, it was music on the porch. Yeah. You know, and then we moved to Indiana uh, when I was about four, and it just went into the living room. Every Crystal Gale fan is gonna wanna get the new album called You Don't Know Me, uh, and I think we're even gonna do a tune from that, aren't we? Yes, I'm going to. Which Can't I'm wait. pretty happy about. <laughs> well, I'm gonna jam with a band in this incredible string section going into the break. Crystal Gale is gonna get ready to perform and you're going to absolutely love the song. You're gonna love the album. You better get a copy of it because if you're a Crystal Gale fan and if you're not, what's wrong with you?
So why don't, in the meantime, let's get Keith to tell you how you can get your own copy of Crystal's great new album. Crystal Gale's You Don't Know Me releases September 6th. Everywhere music is sold, like iTunes and Amazon. And you can even pre-order it at crystalgale.com. That's where you'll discover where to see her in concert as well.